Okay, you wanna know how to simplify fractions? I'm here and we're gonna make it pretty simple, okay? I'm gonna do these four problems and then if you've got some more complicated ones, we're gonna save that for the end right there, okay? Guys, simplifying fractions is a big deal. Pretty much when you're adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, whatever, whenever you're using fractions, 99.9% .9 of the time, your teacher's gonna want them in the most simplified form, okay? So this is how you do this. Let's get started. So you have eight twelfths. What is that simplified? Well, I'm going to show you two ways to go about this where you end up with the same answer and you're essentially doing the same thing, just going about it in two different ways. Okay. So the first way is listing the um, factors of each of these. Okay, because we want to find the biggest number that goes into both of them. Okay, so eight is one and eight are factors, right? Because one times eight is eight. Two times four is eight. So those are factors and that's all of them. Okay, then we've got 12. We've got one times 12 is 12. Two times six is 12 and three times four is 12. Okay, now I'm gonna go and circle all of the ones that are the same. So we've got one and one, two and two, four and four, okay? The biggest one is four. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide the top, my numerator, and the bottom by four. Why can I do that? Because we're dividing by four over four, which simplifies down to one. So we're really just dividing by one. Okay, so eight divided by four gives me two. 12 divided by four gives me three. When we divide fractions, we go straight across, okay? So I am left with two thirds, okay? But what if there's another way to do it, okay? You're basically doing the same thing. If I start with eight twelfths, now if I was simplifying this, probably the first thing I would notice is that they're both even, and so I would probably just cut them both in half, divide the top and the bottom by two and get four sixths. And then I realized, okay, I'm still not simplified all the way because there's still a number that goes into both of them. And that's two. They're still both even. They can still both be cut in half. Four divided by two gives me three. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Guys, where did that come from? Two. Maybe I was looking ahead. Six divided by two gives me three. Okay. And how do I know I'm done? because there's no number besides one that goes into both of them, okay? So two ways to do it, same answer. And you can see where I divided by two twice, it was really like I divided by four, okay? Now, visually, eight twelfths, right? Then I have my two thirds, and see how they just line up beautifully? Sorry about that glare, that's just my light. All right, so see how those line up that means they're equal, right? Okay, so the simplified version of eight twelfths is two thirds. Okay, next one, four twentieths. What is the largest number that goes into both of those? You might see it without even having to write these out, but I'm gonna list them. One times four is four, two times two is four, and that's all of them. All right, 20, we've got a few more, so one, and 20, two and 10, three doesn't go into it, four times five, okay? And that's all of them. Now I'm gonna go ahead and circle the ones they have in common, okay? Biggest one is four. Maybe you saw that without even having to list them out. All right, four divided by four gives me one. 20 divided by four gives me five. Awesome. Okay, but you also might have noticed, oh, they're both even. So I'm gonna divide them both by two. I'm gonna cut them both in half. Four divided by two gives me two. 20 divided by two gives me 10. Oh, look, they're both still even. Okay, so I'm gonna cut them both in half again. I end up with one fifth. Beautiful. I don't have tiles for those, but if I did, they would line up beautifully, okay? All right. 41 hundredths. I need the biggest number that goes into both of these, the biggest factor. So for 40, I have 
1 and 40, 2 and 20, 3 doesn't go in, 4 does, 4 times 10, 5 times 8, 6 doesn't go in, 7 doesn't go in, 8 goes in, I've already got it listed, okay? All right, 100, we've got 1 and 100, 2 times 50, 3 doesn't go in, 4 times 25, 5 times 20, 6 doesn't go in, 7, 8, 9, 10 times 10. And I can stop because I came together, right? If I keep going up, those aren't going to go in except these ones I've already listed, okay? So now go ahead and circle the ones that match. Do, 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 do. Now, this is one of those ones where you might be like, oh, this takes a long time. But as you do it more and more, you're going to find you can kind of skip some of these steps or some of them you'll do in your head. Okay. So biggest number that goes into them is 20. So I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 20. 40 divided by 20 gives me 2. 100 divided by 20 gives me 5. Awesome. Okay, but can I show you how I probably would have done this? I probably would have gone, oh, they are both divisible by 10. So I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 10, which gives me 4 tenths. And then I might notice, oh, they're both even, so I can divide by 2. 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. 10 divided by 2 gives me 5. And I know I'm done because there's no shared factors, okay? Okay. All right, feeling good about this? All right, one more simpler one and then we're gonna do the crazy one, okay? All right, again, listing these factors. One times 12, two times six, three times four. And then I've got 36. One times 36, two times 18, right? That's one of those ones I always forget. I don't know why. Okay, it's two times 18, yes. Three times 12. 4 times 9, 5 doesn't go in, 6 times 6, okay, all right, circling ones they have in common, uh, 4, 6, even though it's listed twice, I just need to circle one of them, you can circle both if you're just feeling friendly, all right, highest number that they, that, <laughs> sorry, let me find my words, highest number that goes into both of them is 12, so I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 12. Again, you may have seen that without having to list it all. If so, props to you. 12 divided by 12 gives me 1. 36 divided by 12 gives me 3. So I've got 1 third. Okay, now let me show you the way I probably would have solved that because, you know, you could call it the lazy way. I don't know. Sometimes it's easier. Sometimes it's not. So I probably, you know, I probably would have noticed that three went into both of them is probably what I would have noticed first. Is that funny? So 12 divided by three gives me four. 36 divided by three gives me 12. And then I probably would have noticed that four goes into both of these. Four divided by four gives me one. 12 divided by four gives me three. Okay, but you might have noticed they were both even and done six eighteenths and then noticed that those were both even. Anyways, um, so there's different ways to do it as long as you get to the right answer, okay? All right, one third for that one. Okay, here's this crazy one. 375 divided by 875. Okay, well, guess what? I already wrote down our factors here. How do you find these for big numbers? For these small ones, it's not as bad, right? Well, everybody might have their own uh, strategy. Mine is with the calculator. <laughs> if, if it's a bigger number, I'll type in 375 divided by, well, I know two doesn't go into it because it's not even right, but divided by three. Oh, okay, that came with one. Four, five, okay, six, seven, eight, nine. And write down the ones that have the whole numbers, right? Um... Also, what you can do is go to Google and type in factors of 375, as long as your teacher is okay with you doing that. Personally, I feel it's okay because it's not just giving you the answer. It's giving you a tool to find the answer. Okay. 
Um, so you can go to Google and say factors of 375 and it'll give you these. Okay. So here they are. Now I'm going to go through and circle the ones that match, right? So one, one, can you see that yellow? Okay. Yellow is my favorite color and I like never going to use it because it doesn't show up on camera very well. So I'm just trying to give it a shot. Okay. 25 and 25, da, 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 125 and 125. Did I miss any? I don't think I did. All right, so the biggest number that goes into both of them is 125, okay? So I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 125, okay? When I do that, I get 3 over 7, 3 sevenths, okay? But what if you're like, I don't want to find all those factors, blah, that's Probably kind of how I would think. Well, you might notice 375 over 875. Probably what I would notice is that they both end in five. So five is going to go into both of them, right? So I would probably divide the top and the bottom by five. You would, you might also notice that 25 goes into both of them. So you could do that. We're just going to do five for fun here. So we get 75 over 175 when I divide those and then I'm like oh they're both still five so I'm going to divide by five and you get 15 over 35 okay oh they both still end in a five so five still goes into both of them 15 divided by five gives me three 35 divided by five gives me seven okay oh see how it took a little bit more dividing but I got to the same answer and I didn't have to list out these factors so this is truly just like a preference thing and also how big the numbers are I kind of pick and choose what I do with different fractions I'll do different things okay so it's kind of a preference thing do what works best for you okay all right hopefully this made sense this is an important skill to learn for your fraction future okay so Hopefully this made sense and you can get your homework done and go to bed and have dreams of math that aren't nightmares.